But the Secretary of Education, Mr. Miguel Cardona. Mr. Secretary, thanks for your time this morning. Glad to be with you, Craig. Let's start with the president's remarks this afternoon. We know, among other things, he is going to announce uh, some 500 million free at-home tests for anybody who wants them. Uh, we know he's going to announce some new steps to expand vaccinations as well. But we haven't seen or heard a lot of specifics about schools just yet. What specific steps can we expect to hear from the president on keeping schools open safely? Well, thank you. It, you know, we know students learn best in the classroom, and it's my expectation, given the accessibility of vaccines and of tests, that our schools stay open in-person learning five days a week. That's what our students deserve. And what you will hear is uh, how we're moving forward with that, making text tests more accessible, working with our schools and our, our districts to partner with their health expert uh, partners in their states to do more testing in the schools. Um, you're going to hear about test to stay, which means that students don't have to quarantine for so long if they're not showing symptoms or if they test negative. So the goal is to keep our children in school where they learn best, and uh, we're moving forward in that direction. Any plans to, to send any of these half a billion tests directly to schools? You know, with the American Rescue Plan funds, uh, funds are available for districts to purchase tests and set up systems of testing. A regular surveillance testing is critical for us to make sure we keep Omicron out of our schools and keep our schools open for in-person learning. So those efforts are underway in many districts across the country. We continue to work with our states and our uh, district leaders to find ways to set up systems using uh, resources either in the community or setting up your own and having systems within the school, which I think work best to keep our children in the classroom. You mentioned the, the new test to stay policy that the administration uh, announced uh, recently, and basically instead of forcing unvaccinated students to quarantine if they come in close contact with COVID, they could stay in, in class if they test negative at least twice during the week after exposure, if I remember correctly. But given how fast we've seen this new variant spread, how feasible is that plan, Mr. Secretary? You know, it, it's one of the strategies that is critically important to make sure that our students are safe, number one, and that our schools are open. But I think coupled with increased vaccination rates in, uh, for our students as young as five years old, uh, ensuring we're utilizing masks where possible so that our students are not spreading COVID-19. I think all those things together will lead to our schools staying open. Um, testing does matter. Having systems set up do matter. So we're pleased that the president is taking additional steps to ensure access to testing uh, in our communities. Because as you know, Craig, community spread typically ends up in our schools. It's not that cases are spreading within the school, but if you have high community spread, it's typically going to make its way into our classrooms and unfortunately cause quarantining and in some places require schools to close temporarily. So let's all do our part, increase testing, get vaccinated if you're not, get boosted if you haven't gotten your booster shot so that we can keep our kids in the classroom where they belong. Let's, let's talk about teachers for a moment here uh, because there again have been a number of reports about staffing shortages um, in schools all over this country right now. Uh, when, when it comes to the staffing shortages, Mr. Secretary, what, what's being done to address those? Yeah. Yeah, that is a, a, an issue that we're working closely with our states to address as well. You know, last week I sent a letter to uh, school chiefs across the country and superintendents telling them, reminding them that the American Rescue Plan funds can be used to uh, get incentivize teachers coming on board. But I'm also asking for them to think about creative alternatives, uh, such as making sure that our retired teachers can come back into the classroom, even if it's temporarily, without having to worry about losing their retirement pension. Uh, working with our institutions of higher education to get our, our juniors and our seniors that are looking for a career in public service, whether that's teaching or social work, to get out and help us as we keep our schools open, uh, looking for flexibilities there. So there's a lot of work we can do. There are funds there to help incentivize that work. And we're going to continue to work in partnership with our states uh, to lift up best practices on how they're doing it. We need to think about how we're paying our educators, making sure they have a livable wage. It's unacceptable for teachers to be working two to three jobs to make ends meet in the United States in 2021. We can do better. You mentioned the funds that are available that haven't been tapped into uh, by a number of school districts. Why is that? I mean, the, the money's been in this pot for a while now. 
Why haven't schools, school districts in many cases, why haven't they accessed the funds? Well, I wouldn't say that they have not accessed the funds. I would say that they're probably using CARES uh, funds uh, from before, before the American Rescue Plan funds. And what they're using these funds for are uh, appropriate strategies to keep schools open, enough PPEs. Uh, there was a, a huge investment over the summer on summer learning opportunities. But what we're encouraging our education leaders across the country to do is think creatively now as we talk about teacher shortages or as we talk about additional programming after hours. And unfortunately, due to this Omicron, how we keep our schools open during this wave of Omicron, we did it during Delta. If you recall, Delta came in two weeks before school opened. We were able to reopen our schools. We can do it again with Omicron if we're uh, paying attention to those mitigation strategies and utilizing our funds to address the challenges that come up with the reopening. I mean, we, we know how valuable it is to have uh, our, our children in person uh, versus virtual. Right. There's the, the report earlier this year that found, uh, quote, significant learning loss uh, due to the pandemic. And back in March, the CDC published findings from a 2020 survey of parents that found more than half who had kids in virtual learning had increased emotional distress. Many had trouble sleeping. Right. Some even reported they were increasingly uh, using drugs or alcohol. With those risks in mind, how, uh, how would you advise administrators who are, again, in many school districts, struggling mightily uh, with this rapidly spreading uh, uh, Omicron variant? Right. You know, I, I appreciate you bringing that to the forefront. You know, I'm a father of two teenagers, and their uh, emotional health matters, too. And I've heard from parents across the country that they need our schools to stay open. And to those administrators and principals and superintendents and chiefs, I commend them, first of all, for doing what they need to do to keep our schools open. And I realize how challenging it is. My message is let's continue to use our ARP funds. Let's continue to learn from one another. Let's continue to listen to our parents about uh, what they're seeing with their own children. But let's think outside the box and make sure that we're doing what we need to do to keep our doors open. Five days a week, full time is what our students need. They need more, not less. I know they're working really hard on that. And uh, we're going to continue to be partners with them because it's most important for us that our schools stay open. Our kids need to be in schools. That's not only where they get their academic learning, and we can talk a lot about missed instruction, but for many students, that's where they get warm meals. That's where they get uh, adult interaction um, or access to mental health supports. You know, students are six times more likely to access mental health supports in their schoolhouse than anywhere else. And our students have gone through a lot. We need to keep our schools open. It's critically important for our country. Education Secretary uh, Miguel Cardona. Uh, Mr. Secretary, it's a nice festive background you have there as well. Nice job with the tree and the stockings. Well done, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We try. <laughs> uh, still ahead.